Today we are talking about freshwater ecosystems. So we've been talking about the water cycle and surface water and groundwater. And so now we'll talk a little bit about the ecosystems that they make. Um, so this is just a very, very quick overview of the three main types of freshwater ecosystems. So um, our goal for this is that we will be able to identify the freshwater ecosystems um, as wetlands, rivers and streams, and lakes based on their defining hydrologic characteristics. So that just means the um, characteristics of the water that make it. Okay, so there are some physical gradients that we need to pay really close attention to in freshwater and those will determine the type of system we have. So we need to look at the depth, the sunlight, the temperature, which is determined by the sunlight, um, that can reach, which is also determined by the depth, um, the amount of nutrients, and also the movement of the water. Okay, so there's three types of systems, as we mentioned already. We have lakes, we have rivers and streams, and then wetlands. Okay, so lakes are bodies of water that are completely still. They are classified based on nutrients. So we have oligotrophic, which is nutrient poor. We have eutrophic, which is nutrient rich, and mesotrophic, which is somewhere in between. So here's a picture of them. So we have oligotrophic, which is nutrient poor, eutrophic, eutrophic which is nutrient rich, and mesotrophic, which is somewhere in between on the nutrient scale. Um, within a lake, there are different zones, and those zones are determined by the depth of the water and the distance from the shore. So the first zone we have out at the edge is the littoral zone. Um, that zone is usually less than two meters deep, and it has rooted vegetation. Sunlight can reach all the way to the bottom of the littoral zone. So this is the shore of the lake. Kind of. And then we have the limnetic zone, which is the top layer of water um, out in the middle of the lake, farther away from the shore. So photosynthesis can definitely happen here. Um, sunlight reaches all the way to the edge of the limnetic zone. And then when sunlight stops reaching, you get the profundal zone. So this is the open water where sunlight does not reach. And then the benthic zone is anything along the bottom. So benthic just means like aquatic sediments. So anything along the bottom is a benthic zone. And then we have rivers and streams. So rivers and streams are characterized by moving water. Um, it's a stream if it's less than two meters deep. It's a river if it's more than two meters deep. Um, so you have tributaries and river sources, usually up in the mountains of an area. Um, and then you have the main channel. And then you have the riverbank or floodplain which is actually more of a wetland than a river. And then at the very bottom, you have the mouth of the river or the delta. So each of these um, areas is characterized by a certain type of flow, a certain type of sediment. So up at the source water, we have very fast flow because we have steep slopes and lots of runoff. Um, and so we have big sediments. And then as we move down into the main channel, um, we have kind of medium-sized sediments and a medium flow velocity. And then at the mouth, um, we get lots of deposits of very fine sediments like clay and silt. And the speed of the river, the velocity of the river slows down a lot because it's hitting still water. So wetlands um, are defined by the Clean Water Act as this big honking complicated definition, but the important part that you need to know is that a wetland has a water table that is less than 12 inches below the surface of the ground, so the soil must be saturated. It must have hydrophytic vegetation, which is just vegetation that is adapted to living with its roots wet, and hydric soils which just means soils that have formed while the ground was flooded. So those are our three types of aquatic ecosystems um, and how they are classified. So we will learn more about these a little bit later.